Okay, so what are the different models which falls or are used for when edge? We will be looking at whether it can be physical or virtual, what they are, we will be looking at that, right? So four planes, orchestration plane, management plane, control plane, and the data plane. So these are the four uh, planes which are there. And then um, taking a quick overview on each of them is starting with the first management plane. So what is the role of the management plane? The role of the management plane or we manage is to do configuration management, certificate management, device registration and monitoring. And this is a key component of your SD-WAN. Your VanEdge uh, would always have a management tunnel with the vManage using the TLS or TLS based protocol. Okay, so vManage is going to be the most important component and vManage is the one which would be used to push device related configuration to the VanEdges. vSmart which is nothing but your control plane or used for your control plane. So this is the brain of your SD-WAN and it is used to build an overlay network which is used uh, to run a control plane protocol called as OMP. So OMP is overlay management protocol. This is the control protocol which is used to uh, bring the intelligence to your VH. So if you want to take an example, Consider we manage as your management station or management application which is running some kind of tools which you normally use for configuring your devices. So your configuration management, your image uh, uh, deployment, all those things you are able to do it through this tool which is we manage, right? So your centralized management is easy now because you have a tool which is going to be used for doing all your device related management and then your intelligent because sd-wan decouples the control and the data part right uh, any software defined component whether it is software defined networking uh, using nxos uh, aci uh, based or vmware's uh, uh, NXS, NSX, so all those SDN kind of uh, uh, solutions are basically nothing but decoupling of the control plane and the data plane. So the control and the data plane are separate. So same thing, your software defined WAN or your SD WAN is doing that. Your control plane is going to be separated uh, and your intelligence is given by a device called as vSmart using a protocol called as OMP. So OMP, think of it as your control protocol, uh, like a routing protocol, which you are using with your Vanage devices to get information about the different routes. So basically there are, and we will see this in detail later on, but just to uh, summarize what exactly is OMP is that you have three type of routes OMP can be used with. You have, uh, OMP route and we will talk about each routes in detail later on what do they do when we do our routing bit you have T lock route and you have something called as a service route okay so all these three routes are going to be advertised using OMP so OMP is advertising any of these routes to your vintage and then you have the orchestration plane device which is called as a v bond your v bond this is the orchestration server it handles the onboarding of the vanage devices in the sd wan during the onboarding it helps in identifying uh, to the uh, vanage who is going to be your v smart server and who is going to be your v managed server right so what it means is nothing but when your Vanage device are coming up, they are the first time they are going to always go to vBond. And then through vBond, they are going to come to know who is going to be your vSmart and who is going to be your vManage controller. So the IP address of your vSmart and vManage is going to be provided by vBond. And then your Vanage device will 
go to those respective controllers and would start building the control plane of OMP with them. So we will look at in the next uh, lesson how the uh, OMP is or the overlay uh, management uh, uh, bring up process. So what is the bring up process of the overlay management network? How does the overlay management network comes up by uh, either talking about what is the role of a V manage V smart and V bond in that bring up process? Okay. So that is your V bond, which is your August orchestration server. And then your data plane is going to be handled by your Venage. So your data plane is either your iOS XC base hardware or CSR 1000V or it can be Viptela OS. Okay. One benefit which you get with the data plane in SD-WAN is that this is always going to be a secure communication, which means that your data plane is going to build with another Venage, uh, uh, a kind of an encrypted tunnel using IPsec. So IPsec is natively running on Venage devices. So that's why you have direct native security between all your Venage devices whenever any type of data traffic is moving between them, right? So this is the roles and responsibilities of the different uh, controllers which are there in SD-WAN. Now let's look at each component separately and let's understand the uh, in detail about all the individual component. So the first, we are going to start with the Venage from the lower to the up. So the Vanage, uh, who can be a Vanage? Vanage can be uh, either a Viptela OS running device. So there are different uh, model of devices which you can run like VH100, VH which can give you uh, the uh, devices 100B or it can be a device which is 100M or it can be a 100M uh, VM, uh, sorry, WM. So any of these devices are all part of the VH100 VH series. Then you have ISR 1100, uh, and then you have VH1000, VH2000, and VH5000. So all these are Viptela based products, which came into Cisco's portfolio once the acquisition took place. And then you have a virtual, so you can run on the virtual branch, or a private or a public kind of a cloud uh, inside a virtual machine, VH Cloud. So that's a VM version of the Vanage, which is running Viptela OS. And then you have iOS XC, which is called as CH or Cisco's uh, operating system, which is based on iOS XC. Okay, so it is. It's not similar to iOS XE, which you normally find it on your catalyst switches or your ISR series routers. It's a, a modified operating system for SD-WAN. Okay, so it is still iOS XE, but there are certain modifications which is done on the operating system front to run SD-WAN. Okay, so that it will not be the same image which you normally use, iOS XE image, which you normally use to run your um, iOS related configuration. Uh, it has been modified a little bit. Okay, we'll see that later on. How to how does the iOS XE SD WAN looks like? But these are the different models which are going to be compatible with uh, your SD WAN. Okay, so either it is an ISR series uh, one thousand series or ISR series four thousand series uh, routers or you can run it on a ASR 1001 or ASR 1002 series uh, hardware. You can also run um, SD-WAN with iOS XC on uh, ENCES uh, hardware. ENCES is nothing but enterprise network computing system. This is typically used for NFP kind of functionality with Cisco network function virtualization. And then you can also run it at the software level uh, in VM using 
CSR 1000. So there's a different image for CSR 1000 V for SD1. It's not the same image like your CSR 1000 V which runs for your iOS XE. Okay, so these are the different Vanage devices which are compatible to run SD WAN. Now, the controllers are either going to be an on prem deployment, which means that you deploy all your uh, controllers in your premise, okay, on your own ESXi or KVM kind of server. And on premise, you can either install as an individual VM or you can also use container based uh, approach. A container based approach is similar to Docker's. If you have heard of Docker's, then it is similar to that where you are not running a hypervisor and then on top of hypervisor, you are running different, different VMs, but you are basically running a, a kind of one single. Uh, image and inside that image you are running a operate different virtual machines in a container in its own ram and uh, in its own system resource uh, capability environment so this is much simpler and the way forward of running operating system uh, sorry different uh, serves uh, systems inside uh, vmware rather than running it on an individual vm you're running it at a docker level you are running it at a container level so that's an on-premise kind of a option you can also run your controllers in a hosted environment so either you're running it in cisco ops cisco ops is nothing but the cisco cloud or if you are running it in either aws or azure kind of an environment okay so all the controllers are not on your premise but running in the cloud environment again it can be running as an individual vms or you can run as a container uh, for all your different uh, controllers all right <clears throat> now the next are the different terminologies which we are going to uh, talk about what are these terminologies which are typically found in an sd van so on the right hand side of your screen you would be seeing a sample uh, topology now this is not the topology for your lab or anything but this is a sample topology which i have used to explain to you all these terms uh, what they mean and uh, in the sd van and how do they relate in the sd van the first term we are going to understand is uh, ztp or pnp so ztp is a viptela term so this ZTP term came into existence when in the Webtela world it was. Uh, it stands for zero touch provisioning. Okay, it's a provisioning server. So auto uh, a provisioning is nothing but when your VanEdge device is booting up, right? It needs to talk to your vSmart, uh, sorry, it needs to talk to your vBond first and then from vBond it will get the information of vSmart and your uh, uh, vManage. Now, in order for a VanEdge device to talk to a vBond, it needs to have certain configuration, right? So those configurations needs to be done by the administrator. So rather than doing the configuration, there is a way where you don't need to do anything. You simply plug your device and boot up your device and automatically the device will search for your uh, uh, ZTP server. Uh, this ZTP server can be uh, on-prem server, which means that this server is running within your premise. Sorry. It can be an on-prem server running within your premise inside your let's say data center so you have a data center and this ZTP server is running inside your data center or if you want you can go ahead and use the Cisco cloud ZTP also which means that it is running in the Cisco cloud PNP is a Cisco term and this PNP is going to be on Cisco cloud it cannot be on on premise so PNP has to be on the Cisco cloud. Now, both these servers, either ZTP or PNP, depends on the vendage. 
if your vnh device is your vh which means that whenever i say vh it means riptela os right then it would be ztp which they can be which it can connect to to download the uh, uh, to begin the provisioning of that particular device without actually an administrator doing any kind of configuration it can automatically discover the ztp server and through ztp server it knows who is going to be the uh, vbond he needs to talk to and from vbond he can get the information about the vsmart and the uh, vmanage now the whole point of using a ztp or pnp it is not that you have to use ZTP or PNP, but the whole point of using ZTP or PNP is for fast deployment of a site. Okay, so one of the uh, disadvantage of the traditional WAN is about uh, how much time it takes to bring up a site. So that time is reduced when you are using ZTP or PNP kind of solution to bring up a site. Okay, because the device is automatically uh, provisioned. You don't have to do any configuration on the device, so you don't have to bring the device all the back to HQ in case if you don't have physical uh, access to that particular device, then you don't have to tell anyone to ship that device to the HQ. Then you do your required configuration, ship it back to the branch, and then they simply connect and start doing. Uh, and if any issue occurs, then probably you might want to troubleshoot. So all those things is not required. Even if you don't have physical uh, access to the device, you can still be able to bring that device up by simply using ZTP or PNP. So it's a deployment uh, option which you can use with sd -WAN. Okay, so as I said, ZTP is Viptela term, which came from Viptela, and PNP is a Cisco term. Uh, ZTP can be on-premise, let me use this rather than that okay so ztp is a viptela term and it can be on premise or it can be on cisco cloud okay so both options is available to pro uh, keep the uh, deployment server either on premise or it can be cisco cloud your pnp on the other hand is a cisco term um, and it is going to be on cisco cloud only you cannot host a pnp server on prem okay typically ztp is used by vh type of devices pnp is used by ch type of devices okay which is nothing but your cisco's ios xc sd wan image type of devices either isr series or asr series or csr 1000 v okay so that is your ztp or pnp uh, provisioning servers then you have the next term is transport underlay so transport underlay is going to be nothing but the underlay uh, van which you are connected to so the underlay is going to be either you can run it sd van on either a 4g or an mpls kind of a transport or even internet okay so whatever is the underlay a network which you are using the actual WAN connection or internet based connections or if it's a radio uh, 4G WiMAX kind of a setup which is there uh, that is going to be your underlay so whatever is the actual physical connection which gives access to this vantage device that is referred as transport underlay okay typically this term was used when we were uh, using uh, DMVPN kind of uh, a deployment so if you know dmvpn then you are familiar with the term of underlay and overlay okay now the overlay is the actual uh, control or after the control is established the actual ipsec tunnel which is going to be running between the vantage devices okay so this ipsec tunnel 
which is going to be used for securing the package. So if let's say my 192.0.2.20 uh, wants to reach to 203.0.113.0 network, then the traffic from my Venage uh, from branch is going to be sent over the IPsec tunnel all the way to the HQ. And then vice versa, it will be sending back that traffic through that IPsec tunnel. So your overlay is going to be a secure tunnel always using IPsec protocol. Okay, so that is natively going to be available. That is referred as transport overlay. System IP, now the system IP is a, a kind of a unique router ID, which is a typically a loopback address of the device. So if you look over here in this SD-WAN example, you will see that each Vanage device has a system ID. So it's not only Vanage, but even the controller is going to have a, a kind of a system IP. Now this system IP is just an identifier. Okay, so you can see that this vSmart has a system IP of 192.0.2.9. And this Vanage, all the Vanages have their respective system IP, which are there. Now, this system IP is simply an identifier which is there for that specific device to be identified in SD1. But in case if you want, you can advertise this system IP into your uh, SD1 overlay so that if in case you want to use certain services like uh, Syslog or SNMP, then you can go ahead and uh, uh, use the source IP as the system IP. Okay, but typically that system IP is not reachable unless and until you advertise that system IP into your OMP routes. So we will see in our example how to do that, but the use case of doing that is only when you want either your syslog or SNMP kind of server to have connections to be initiated by that system IP, then uh, you would be going ahead and uh, advertising this in OMP routes or else you using system IP simply for identification of that managed device in your vManage or in your controllers. The next one is site ID. Now this is a very important uh, piece of information. The site ID represents any number, it's a 32 bit value, any number between one, two, four, uh, two, nine, four, nine, six, seven, two, nine, five, right? Four million and above, which is going to be for representing a site um, and the devices which are connected locally in that site. So if you look at it, there is a site, let's say this is an HQ site, and this HQ site has two Vanage, Vanage 4 and Vanage 2. Now these Vanage 4 and Vanage 2 has a site ID of 100, which is there. Right? So both of them have a site ID, which is similar because they are in the same location. But if you look at, let's say a branch, which is at the remote location. So you have two branches at the remote location one say branch west and one let's say is branch east location. Now these two branches have different site ID. So this one has a site ID of 500. This one has a site ID of 600. So each device when they are at a specific location and you want that location to have a tag, then that is what is going to be given by the site ID. So either an HQ would have a tag of X and branch would have a tag of X anything. Now one thing you, it is very much important to remember that when you have two devices or more devices which are with the same site ID then they will not bring the data tunnel up with each other which means that the data tunnel between my VNH2 and VNH4 will not be up but the data tunnel between the uh, VNH2 and the Vanage one will be up because they are at two different site IDs. They are talking to two different site IDs. So this tunnel would be up, but the other tunnel, which is within the same site, will not be up because they are using they are part of the same site ID. So 
this point is very much important to remember that data tunnel will only be up with two different uh, site IDs. Domain ID, domain ID is nothing but group of, when you group your vSmart with a VH, your vSmart and your VNH would bring the OMP uh, control tunnel up when they are part of the same domain. Okay, so the domain ID is nothing but a representation of that domain that I as Venage would be able to bring the control tunnel with up with you if you and me are of the same domain ID. Now domain ID is a numerical value which you assign, but this domain ID should be same when you're trying to bring the control tunnel up between the VH and the uh, VSmart. So you can see that the domain ID will be same to all the uh, vSmart and all the Vantage devices because you want that vSmart to bring the control OMP tunnel up with all the Vantage. They will not be able to do that if they are in different domain IDs. Organization name, again, this is a very, very important component, organization name. Organization name would help in identifying a device uh, if they are allowed to join an SD-WAN solution or not, okay? So the organization name throughout your SD-WAN needs to be same. So all your Vantage devices should be talking to the same organization ID and this organization, uh, sorry, organization name. And this organization name is going to be used as an authentication technique in bringing up your Vantage devices. So later on, we will see in the next uh, lesson, how the uh, SD-WAN devices bring up process work. So at that time, we are going to look at that the organization name inside the certificate of all the controller, controllers or inside the certificate of the Vantage device is going to be used as an authentication method for authenticating the uh, device with the controller. So organization name is a very, very important component in your SD WAN. Transport color. Transport color is just a unique uh, mark for the different transport connections. So we know what is a transport connection. Transport connection is nothing but your underlay, transport underlay, which is either a 4G or MPLS based network or internet uh, based network. Now, your transport color is kind of a mark which is assigned to the different transport underlays. Okay, so there are predefined or free, pre uh, um, uh, pre populated in um, marks which are there. Okay, which you have to select whenever you are doing any kind of uh, uh, transport configuration. So there are some private transport colors, and there are some public transport colors which are there. So we will look at this configuration later on, uh, but basically you identify a transport interface with a transport color, okay? So we will see how to do the configuration of that particular uh, uh, interface and how do I assign the different uh, transport color to that interface, okay? T-lock, T-lock is nothing but transport location. Now, the transport location or T-lock is actually a uh, next hop value of a particular uh, uh, transport, but a particular transport is identified with the T-lock, okay? So if I want this particular Vantage device to reach to this network, this network from this Vantage device would be reachable via the T-lock, which is advertised by my VH2 device uh, uh, using uh, the OMP route, okay? So OMP route would have this information about what is the next hop, uh, what is the network prefix, and what is the next hop. And this next hop is nothing but the T-lock. And this next hop is advertised in OMP using the T-lock route. Okay, so there are three types of route, OMP route, T-lock route, and service route. So think of it like this, your OMP routes are nothing but your network prefix with next hop value. But in this case, the next hop value is nothing but T-lock. And to know 
how to reach to that T-lock, you are advertising that T-lock in the T-lock route. Okay, so we will see this in detail later on when we do routing, but the uh, T-lock consists of three parameters. Okay, so in the inside the T-lock route, or when you just talk about what is a T-lock, T-lock consists of three parameters. Those three parameters are system IP plus uh, transport color. plus encapsulation type or encapsulation protocol. Encapsulation protocol are only two options, either GRE or IPsec. We cannot have, it. there is no other encapsulation which is supported in SD-WAN. So if you look over here, this is kind of a T-lock and by default, the uh, encapsulation is IPsec, which is there, unless and until you change it. So if you look at that, if you look at this, the when H2 has a T-lock value of its system IP, right? So the system IP is uh, 192.0.2.1 and it is the transport color, which is default is the transport color, which is there. So this and encapsulation is going to be IPsec, right? So that's how the T-lock value is going to be there. So we will see all these information uh, when we do the bring up process in the next uh, class and after that, which is going to be the practical on bringing up all the devices. So how to verify the different information, how to verify what color is assigned to a, a particular Venage uh, uh, interface or what is the T-lock information of that particular transport. So, but these terms, which are, uh, displayed right now are the most important terms which are there in your SD1. Okay, because they are, these terms are what fills the component SD1 uh, in total. Okay, so the next thing we are going to talk about is OMP. So OMP we have already discussed uh, in quite a bit in previous slides that OMP is nothing but the control uh, protocol, but this OMP is actually using TLS or DTLS type of tunnel, okay? And the encryption which um, OMP uses, the encryption which OMP uses is AES-256, okay? For encrypting all the control packets between the Vanage and vSmart, right? Uh, once the Vanage successfully authenticates with v, uh, vManage, then the uh, next thing which happens is the OMP tunnel gets established with vSmart, right? And OMP has three types of routes which are advertised. Either you have a route called as OMP route. Second one is T-lock route. And the third one is service route. Okay, so when you are setting up OMP, your Vanage devices are advertising any of these three routes to vSmart. And then vSmart is further uh, advertising that information to other Vanage. So, Think of it as uh, like a route reflector, BGP route re reflector. So if you, have, if you have know what is BGP route reflector, it's similar to that where you have uh, IBGP peering, and in order to prevent loop, you are going ahead and making one router act as a route reflector and he reflects all the BGP routes to the other peers. Same way in SD-WAN, your vSmart is going to be like a route, route reflector who is receiving all the different routes, which is either OMP route or T-lock route or service route from the Vanage device. And then it is running the uh, best path algorithm and choosing the best path and then advertising that same to the other Vanage devices. 
okay so all the intelligence of the best path is going to be built by the v smart and it's advertised to the other vanage using omp route okay so omp is the protocol which is used for advertising all the control information with the other uh, vanage devices and this is done by an encrypted channel which is either built by tls or ptls so that is what omp is it is the control protocol of your uh, 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 sd van okay <clears throat> all right so let's the next component of uh, sd van is going to be VPN. okay so again vpn is nothing but it's your vrf term so if you have worked with cisco then you would be knowing what is vrf right virtual uh, routing and forwarding instance but in sd van we call this as vpn so it is not like encapsulating or anything it's simply for segmentation so by default all the interfaces on your vanage device so if i have a vanage and if let's say this vanage has three interface one is towards the transport underlay Okay, and one is towards my LAN, and one is let's say uh, management interface, right? So this is my management interface, your out of band management interface. I have my normal data interface, let's say gigabit zero slash zero slash one, and then I have my normal van facing interface, which is let's say gigabit. 0 slash 0 slash 2 right so this interface is where i would be setting up my omp with the other uh, with my v uh, smart now this interface by default is going to be in a different vrf or vpn okay so whenever i say vpn think in your mind as vrf a separate routing instance would be there so each vpn has its own routing instance in sd -band. so it is used for segmentation of routing tables in sd -band. so your by default there are two default vpns which are there so you have vpn zero so you have vpn zero so this interface is going to be in vpn zero because your OMP gets built on a VPN zero interface. So this VPN zero is also referred as transport VPN because this is the interface which is going to be used for terminating your uh, uh, control tunnel with your vSmart and vManage. So your overlay management protocol gets terminated on an interface which is part of vpn zero then you have vpn 512 now these numbers which is what i'm seeing or what i'm using like zero or 512 are nothing but a four byte value okay which can be anything between zero to six five five three zero Okay, four byte value it is, and out of that six zero to six five five uh, three zero, there are two values which are reserved. One is VPN zero, and the other one is VPN five twelve. Right. So VPN five twelve is for management. It's referred as management VPN. This is going to be used by the management interface for your out of band management. So in case if let's say you want to do an SSH or telnet or send some syslog information uh, from the vanage to a sim security incident and event management tool then you can or even to a syslog server then you can go ahead and use this out of band management interface which is in vpn 512 
to go ahead and talk to the sim or to talk to the syslog server for getting the log information from the vanage okay so you have these default vpns all the interfaces by default are part of vpn 0 which is the transport vpn and then in case if you want you can change though your other interfaces uh, which are not supposed to be used for control and put them into the respective either vpn 512 or you can create a custom vpn okay so a custom vpn would be something where you are creating your own vpn and assigning the interface so this custom vpn is also referred as service vpn which is actually going to be for your lan type of interfaces so this one is vpn 0 this one is your vpn 512 and then the interface which is going to be on your lan side would be in vpn whatever number you want you can use it between 1265530 apart from 512 and 0 because they are already in use or they are reserved so you can tell that okay my lan portion gigabit 0 slash 0 one is part of vpn2 and then this is what i would be using to advertise uh, this service vpn interface is what i would be using to advertise as an omp route to my vsmart controller okay so this is like uh, segmenting all your interfaces so each vpn in sd wan is going to have its own fib so your forwarding information base is going to be different for each interfaces in your sd wan because each interface in your sd wan you can set them in different different vpn okay all right so let let's go back to the next uh, component so so vpns are isolated from each other each vpn has its own forwarding table as i said forwarding information base and reachability within vpn is automatically advertised by omp okay so you don't have to advertise the vpn zero it is automatically going to be part of your omp uh, uh, and it's going to advertise that network which part of vpn zero to your vsmart so you can see that this gives you a kind of a example of what is vpn zero and what is vpn n vpn n is nothing but service vpn so you have a transport vpn and you have vpn 512 which is your uh, management out of band management now this vpn 512 cannot be a sub interface it has to be a physical interface but vpn 0 and service vpn can be physical or can be sub interfaces but your vpn 512 can only be a dedicated out of band interface okay the next component is the data plane security so we have seen that once uh, uh, your vanage device brings that omp uh, control channel up with your vsmart then after that is done the vsmart is going to advertise the routes to the vanage and then vanage is going to bring a data plane tunnel with all the respective vanages which means what that if i go back to the diagram if i have a particular control tunnel up so this vanage one has a control tunnel up with the vsmart which is via dtls then after that once that is done it is going to have a data plane tunnel which is ipsec with all the vanage devices so all the vanage devices which are part of that particular sd van is going to have a data plane tunnel ipsec up with each other okay so that is the default behavior that all apart from okay apart from the devices which are of the same uh, site id if they are in the same site id then they will not have the data plane uh, ipsec tunnel up with each other uh, they will only have it with the other site id devices so this data plane is used for security so that the traffic between the vanage device can be encrypted in ipsec so 
SD WAN uses this IPsec tunnel. Uh, now, the best part of SD WAN is that the tunnel keys are managed by uh, vSmart. Okay, so you don't have to create any configuration. This is automatically done once the OMP tunnel is established with vSmart. The next process is going to be the data tunnel going to be up with all the other managed devices. So that tunnel of data plane of IPsec is going to be automatic. You don't have to do any kind of configuration to do that, apart from just making sure that the device which you are trying to bring the data plane are not in the same site ID, because by default, it will not bring the data plane tunnel up with the same vantage who is in part of the same site ID. And the keys of this IPsec is going to be managed through vSmart. Okay, it's going to use the AES-256 in encryption for going ahead and uh, 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 do the uh, encryption of all the traffic between the VanEdge devices. Also, at every 24 hours, the key would be re uh, regenerated. So, Smart will push the new keys to the VanEdge devices for data encryption. The other thing which is different than a traditional IPsec, which is different in SD-WAN IPsec is that the tunnel is never down. Okay, so there is no explicit timeout of uh, the tunnel. So in IPsec, there is a, in traditional IPsec, you have a lifetime that an IPsec tunnel can be valid for a specific lifetime. And if a new key is not generated, then that particular tunnel will be down. So, that is not the case with uh, SD-WAN IPsec. In SD-WAN IPsec, the uh, tunnel is always going to be up till the time there is BFD, okay? So we'll talk about BFD in the next couple of slides, what it is, but BFD is used as a kind of a keep alive between the data, between the WAN edges to make sure that the tunnel, IPsec tunnel is always up. And the data plane security is going to be achieved using the traditional ESP or AH encapsulation. So ESP gives you uh, encryption, whereas AH gives you authentication, okay? So either you use encryption, which will encrypt the payload. So one important thing which needs to be understood